Hey guys, Jim here. So, today I want to talk about depression. There's been a lot of suicides in the news lately, and and I think that a lot of people don't have a clear understanding of depression. There's, there's of course, the, the kind that everyone experiences when you lose a loved one or you go through a difficult phase in your life, um, and that's completely normal. But the kind that I want to talk about is the, the kind that does not go away when it should, the kind that sticks around and is there for no good reason. Um, a lot of people don't understand depression. They, it, there's a stigma attached to it. People think it's a character weakness. They think, well, you're depressed, but why don't you just snap out of it, you know? Um, and for that reason, a lot of people are afraid to get treatment because they think that they're admitting a weakness, and, and that's definitely not true. People who are experiencing prolonged periods of depression or thinking about killing themselves should absolutely get treatment as soon as possible. I've struggled with depression for as long as I can remember. Um, some of my earliest memories in my life include feelings of depression. I remember just sometimes I would just feel so lonely and hopeless and, and it didn't make any sense because I did not have a rough life at that age. Um, I was carefree. I was a kid. I had nothing to worry about. My parents were still together. Um, I'd never been abused, you know, it was, it was not a time when a kid should be depressed. And over the years, I, the, the feeling never really went away, it was always there with me. And I remember just feeling so hopeless, like there was never going to be a, a way to escape these, these feelings of guilt and, and just self-hatred and, and sadness. And they didn't really come from any particular place, they were just kind of always there, like this dark cloud hanging over me. I know that sounds cliche, but that's how it was. Now, I didn't always experience depression. There were periods of time when it would lift, and I would think, oh my gosh, you know, I've, I've conquered this thing. It's past. It's done. But it would eventually come back. It was cyclical, kind of like, like a tide ebbing and flowing, but it didn't do it with any kind of predictability. It was, I never really knew when it was coming. And when I was experiencing depression, I didn't have any energy, I wanted to sleep all the time, I didn't, I didn't really want to leave my room. I never thought anything would get better, I thought I was always going to feel like that. I felt guilty for being alive, I felt like, like who the hell am I to, to eat food that could go to starving people? Who am I, who am I to take up space in this world? I'm just a burden on everybody who knows me. And, and obviously that's not true, but I felt that very strongly at the time. I used to write about it a lot. I, I would sit in my room for hours just writing and writing in my journal about how I felt. And when I went off to college, I took all of the writing that I had done, and I threw it in a garbage bag, and I got rid of it. I said, I am putting this behind me, opening up a new chapter, I'm going to be happy from now on. And of course that didn't happen. In college, I had a, a really active social life, and I did have a lot of fun, but the depression was always there. So after I graduated from college, I moved out to L.A., and I was very excited, and it was a really great time. And yet, the depression was still there, and it was getting worse. Sometimes I'd be hanging out with friends and knowing that I should be having a good time, but for some reason I just I couldn't. Like, there was this self-doubt and this self-hatred. And I, I always felt so alone, even when other people were around. Shortly after I moved to L.A., I got a good job with good benefits, and I had health insurance. I knew I had to get treatment for depression, but even then I was reluctant because I really wanted to beat this thing on my own. I didn't want to have to start taking pills. I didn't want it to be on my medical record. Eventually, things got really, really bad. At work, I would sneak off on my break, and I would just be in tears for no good reason. Suicide was always on my mind. I reached such a low point I couldn't find joy in anything anymore. Not even driving around in my car, singing along to the radio, which which was always my favorite escape. It was like I could just seal off the rest of the world and and just be this other person. It sounds kind of silly, but that was that was the one place where I could always go and just sort of ignore the rest of the world. And that stopped working. And I knew if I didn't do something about it, there was going to come a time, I felt like, in the next few months when I was not going to be alive anymore. So finally I got the courage to go see a psychiatrist. 
it was it was an amazing feeling to know that I was actually doing something about it. It took a long time to get the right combination of medicines. It's not like, oh, you have an infection, here's some antibiotics. My psychiatrist and I were working on finding a combination that worked just right. I would still experience some lows and there were some, some side effects that didn't agree with me, but eventually I found what I call the magic bullet, the magic combination of medicines that has allowed me to feel normal for the first time in my life. And that was about five years ago. And I cannot tell you how amazing it is to actually experience a normal, healthy, emotional state. Of course I get sad every now and then, but it's not this thing that's hanging over me, and I don't fantasize about killing myself anymore. And I also used to experience some really severe social anxiety. I couldn't go up to a bank teller without my face turning beet red and getting really self-conscious about, like, what was the teller thinking about me? What were the people in line behind me thinking about me? Like, I'm being judged constantly. But after I got on that medication, I didn't feel terrified to meet new people anymore, and I didn't feel self-conscious when I'd go out in public anymore. And that's just such an amazing way to live. So many people take it for granted, and they don't understand what, what it was like for me. And, and I don't expect them to. I'm glad that they don't know what it was like. One of the biggest struggles about going on medication was deciding who to tell and who not to tell. I, I only confided in a couple of really close friends, and I even wish I hadn't done that. My best friend at the time tried to convince me not to take medication, and that was the last thing I needed to hear. She said, Jim, I like who you are. I don't want you to change. I had felt like after all those years of battling depression, it was such a triumph. I'd finally worked up the courage and was finally getting treatment, and here she was trying to talk me out of it. It was such a selfish thing on her part, but but of course she, she didn't understand, and, and how could she? She wasn't feeling the way I was feeling. And it was at that point that I realized she did not know who I really was. Nobody did. Um, none of my friends ever had any suspicion that I was depressed, and it was just such a strange thing to hear. I was really, really good at hiding it from, from everyone, even the people closest to me. And I would advise anybody who is, is struggling with the decision of whether or not to get treatment, don't talk to your friends about it. Just go and get treatment, and you know, it's between you and your doctor. No one else can give you a qualified, responsible answer. One thing I've never understood is people who are so eager to get off of their medication. People who who say, okay, you know, I'm ready to get off of my medication. I feel great. Well, you feel great because you're on your medication. If you get off of your medication, there's a very good chance you'll start feeling lousy again. Medication is a treatment for depression, but it's not a cure. Knowing what my life was like before, I have absolutely no intention of trying to get off of my medication. I will be on it for the rest of my life, if necessary, because I don't ever want to feel that way again. And sure, it's a pain in the ass to have to pay for medication every month, but there are very affordable solutions to that, and maybe I'll make a video um, explaining some of that. Um, I don't have insurance right now, and yet I'm able to get affordable medication without having to go through any sort of charity or government programs or anything. I think a lot of people still feel that even though this medication that has probably saved their lives, they still feel a stigma to it. And they think, well, I want to be normal. I want to get off the medication. Now, there is cognitive therapy where you can restructure your, your thoughts and quite possibly overcome your depression. For me, that's not 100% effective. I need the medication as well. There's clearly some sort of chemical imbalance in my body, and I take no shame in admitting that. Um, I wouldn't be ashamed if I had diabetes and I had to take insulin every day for the rest of my life. It's the same thing. It's a chemical imbalance and it needs to be treated. I would never ever tell somebody who takes insulin, oh, why don't you try to get off of it? You don't need to be on this. And the same is true of people who are taking medication for depression. Anyways, you guys, I feel like this video has been super long, so... If you have any questions or comments or anything, please, you know, send me a private message or leave a comment below. I would be more than happy to talk to you guys about anything you might be going through. Everybody needs a person to listen to them and accept them unconditionally, and if you don't have anybody who will do that for you, I will be that person. Please contact me. Um, I hope you guys are all well. Thank you so much for listening. Take it easy.